Hello and welcome to the Friday, May 12, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I wrote a quick uh, diary today about how to geolocate addresses or really better some of the difficulties around geolocating addresses. There is of course a simple and easy method. You just plug it in any of a number of different websites that will spit out the geolocation for you of this address. But the problem is that uh, many of uh, the databases that this geolocation relies on are not necessarily 100% up to date. And also there are a couple of notoriously difficult cases, like for example, mobile phones, which are becoming a bigger and bigger uh, issue and then also satellite connections of course that are difficult but that's not the only problem here also isps tend to sometimes move ip addresses around from one geographic region to another depending on where they need ip addresses and the databases that are being used for geolocation aren't always up to date a couple other solutions that I point out here is a couple other ideas on confirming geolocation. The one that I probably like the most is Traceroute because that kind of tells you what the upstream ISPs are and such, how the data is being routed to the particular IP address. And that can at least be a reasonable good confirmation that the data that you got from the database, which is often based on who is data, is somewhat accurate. If you have any ideas or any difficult to look up IP addresses, well, uh, let me know. And uh, also I used a little example here of an IP address that isn't really terribly difficult to geolocate, but uh, I'm actually still not 100% sure about the country that that IP address is located in. And well, supply chain attacks are just not going away. Researchers from Trend Micro presented at Black Hat Asia about mobile phones that come pre-installed with a malware. In the past, we have often talked about, in particular in the Android world, about sort of free applications uh, being installed on cheaper phones that are at least dubious. This one is more or less outright malicious where attackers are actually infiltrating companies that are manufacturing these phones and then installing malware at the factory. Trend Micro identified over 80 different plugins and it's sort of your standard crime where one for example I think is kind of interesting it allows the attacker then to rent the phone with five minutes at a time to other criminals and then there's of course your standard spyware keystroke loggers and all the other good stuff that we sort of expect from malicious software. Trend Micro identified about 8.9 million infected devices. This may not really be all that big of a number if you compare it to the billions of actually produced Android phones. On the other hand, uh, this number is probably just a part of the infected population that was actually identified in Trend Micro's telemetry. And again, this doesn't sort of affect your big brand name devices, really more sort of the cheaper low-end devices. With that, also geographies like Eastern Europe and Asia, where uh, these phones are more common, tend to be more likely to be infected. And then I want to at least quickly mention the breach of Tragos. Uh, Tragos, uh, one of the leading ICS security firms, had had a breach, nothing super serious, uh, but uh, two reasons I want to mention it. First of all, to congratulate them on being so open about this event. And then secondly, to focus on one aspect of this breach. The root cause appear to be a new hire, someone that actually wasn't sort of fully onboarded yet uh, to the company. Uh, These new hires, that's always sort of a risky user group. 
I've seen, for example, new hires being targeted after they mentioned that they got hired on LinkedIn. This is not something that you can always avoid. In this particular case, for example, I believe it was a salesperson. They usually have to announce who they work for. That's, after all, sort of a part of their job. But you definitely need to sort of get some controls around this sort of sign-in process, how do you hand credentials uh, to new hires, in particular if you are working for a mostly remote organization. An early February ruckus patched a vulnerability in their wireless device. It was one of those typical IoT-style web application vulnerabilities, pretty straightforward to exploit. Well, uh, Fortinet is now reporting that the Antroyo botnet, if I pronounce this correctly, is taking advantage of this vulnerability. It's a smaller botnet. It's not sort of yet another Mirai derivative. It does a little bit different things around the SOX protocol, but definitely make sure that your ruckus equipment is up to date. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. If uh, there's anything I can do better, let me know. Please leave good reviews with your favorite podcast website if you do think I do a good job. And uh, finally, please subscribe and thanks and talk to you again on Monday.